Hello, everyone. Is the man here I spoke with last night where we spoke of certainty? Oh, good. Good. It's such an important question, uh, issue, this issue of certainty. Because I would say everyone in this room has had at least one experience that is undeniably an experience of the hugeness of being. You know, it, maybe it was lights going off or disappearance of the ego or love bursting the heart open, choir of angels singing. Often the experiences are formed by particular nervous systems and as that nervous system is faced with what is incomprehensible, then the, the display that follows that is particular to the person. But there's an undeniable quality of a particular kind of experience, a particular level of an experience, a transcendent experience, a God experience, experience of truth. And then this issue of certainty arises because, as I was saying last night, all experiences, even transcendent experiences, since they are experiences and have to do with sensory phenomena, are subject to disappearance. So the issue or the question arises, did I really experience anything? <laughs> did that really happen? Is it really meaningful? Because the conditioned experience is the most normal, and that's what has the most weight in our society, for the very reason of keeping society functioning, for keeping this wild, aggressive animal called human in a, a way that it can actually congregate without killing each other again and again and again, although we still do, of course, everywhere. So this certainty arises only, really, after you've had an essential experience. Before that, the whole thing is abstract. Certainty about what? It doesn't even make any sense. But everyone in this room, am I wrong about this? Is there anyone in this room that at least, is there anyone who doesn't at least think, suspect that somewhere, at some point, remembered or not, there was something that happened <laughs> that was not definable in the usual terms of existence. You have never had that. We'll come up here, I'll prove you wrong. <laughs> I know you have because this is your second day in this room and... <laughs> It would be unbearable to sit in here. It just wouldn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense just to the rational, conditioned mind. Good. Exactly. Exactly what? The rational, conditioned mind. And what about it? That's what I have. That's all you have? Well. How do you know you have that? I think, therefore I am. Uh-huh. How do you know you think? There's something that is present when there's thinking and can even observe that deduction, I think, therefore I am, that is also present when there's no thinking. There's no thought of I think, therefore I am. There's some... But, uh, but I'm always thinking. No, you're not always thinking. Oh, yeah. Nope. <laughs> you're not. I know you think you're always thinking because mm. that's what the focus is. That's what gets reinforced. Your thoughts get reinforced externally and internally. Mm -hmm. And you reference, most people reference their lives and their definitions of themselves on their thoughts right. about who they are and life. Mm -hmm. But there are many moments in a day when there's no thought. And at night, when you drop into deep sleep, there's no thought. 
many moments. Oh, okay. But it goes overlooked because the reference point is thought. So what our meeting has the capacity to reveal is that there is a reference field that is unthought, that every thought appears in. And that gets called consciousness or awareness or self or God. But I was trying to put into practice what I saw last night. Uh huh. What did you see last night, first of all? That uh, the people that had various <clears throat> feelings, you told them to drop into that with your consciousness? Yes. So I know we weren't supposed to try to learn something, but I did learn something. <laughs> what did you learn? <laughs> well, I learned, I learned that technique. So and? I went home and practiced that technique, even though you told us not to. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind breaking the rules. <laughs> That's allowed. So, so when I do that, you know, I do what get happens? a more peaceful feeling, but then it's like, it, it's not this transcendent thing and and then I always pull back because it's like you're, right you're because it's a us, technique you're asking us to to jump off a cliff blindfold that's right mm-hmm. but it's not really a cliff I'm asking you to jump off and I'm not asking you to jump off blindfolded I'm asking you to jump with eyes wide open into blackness well it may appear blackness if you're thinking about it. If you jump open-eyed, clear-eyed into that blackness, is it black? In order to jump into that blackness, clear-eyed, you have to leave the thought, oh my God, this is blackness, this is death, this is off the cliff. That's all thought. That's the usual reference points. Mm-hmm. But I'm asking you to leave those reference points behind. You can pick them up as you like. Mm-hmm. But for our purposes. But then I usually close my eyes and then I'm in darkness, right? Are you? There's no, there are no forms perhaps there. And there is it's maybe spooky. the darkness. Well, keep them closed just for a minute. Mm-hmm. But there is awareness of this darkness. Are you, can you get that? There is awareness mm-hmm. of the right. darkness. Right. Is that dark? No, that, that darkness doesn't mean anything. doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Does that mean it doesn't exist? No, darkness is not darkness a doesn't characteristic mean of knowing this. Yeah, this is great. That's right. That's pretty simple, isn't it? It's pretty obvious. What did I just say? <laughs> <laughs> you, you said darkness is not a characteristic yeah. of awareness. Right. Yes. So I'm asking you, with Mm -hmm. eyes wide open, Mm -hmm. to let your individual focused awareness that is usually focused on thought jump, fall, back into its source, which is this awareness of individual awareness, the field of awareness, the ground of awareness. Tell me that again. I mean, what did... I don't I like to fall backwards. Because, I, you know. how come? You might not be caught. Yes, that's it. That's the issue. I might not be caught. And that's the, well, that's really the faith, if we're using the word faith, based on this that I was earlier speaking of, that everyone in this room has had some glimpse some moment, remembered or not, that draws you to this room and drew you back to this room and drew you to practice these techniques. Well, because I'm trying to get to where you are. Yes, but you wouldn't even be interested in where I am if you didn't recognize somewhat where I am. Mm-hmm. What I mean, there are many more people who see me in a day who are absolutely not interested in where I am at all. They're too busy thinking about where they are or where I should be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. So there's, are, there's some recognition or resonance 
that says, I want that, or even if it's just out of curiosity, I'd like to know what that's like. And that's already present. Mm -hmm. That's why I was saying to you, I will prove you wrong because you, you're back here. I mean, you could come here once just because a friend invited you. Oh, I've seen you. all your videos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, then we can just get right down to it. I'll stop being so nice. <laughs> I just want to see you in person. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And what do you see? Same you person. just like the videos. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you see in the videos? <laughs> <laughs> You're cute. <laughs> <laughs> well, Why do you get to know me? <laughs> no, you have, you have the certainty. I see that. So I'm saying that in order to see that, that seeing comes from the same certainty that wants itself, that recognizes itself. I'm not speaking rationally or logically. I'm speaking to the certainty. I'm bypassing or going through the rationale. Maybe it's not irrational either. So you're saying, because I see your certainty, that, that which sees the certainty is what? <laughs> you tell me. You now just drop your personal awareness into that which sees the certainty within yourself. That's me. That's you? Is that your body? No. Is that your personality? Mm -mm. No. But there was no... No. It seems too easy. <laughs> yeah. There's no blackness. There's no. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Big expanse. This is this is really the edge now. It is easy, because it's who you are. It's right here. It's always been right here. The great tragedy is because it's so easy, and because we are so conditioned to what is difficult, because thought is really difficult and takes a great deal of training and practice, that our attention, our belief, our trust, our reference points are to the thought rather than to who you are. So then the challenge, the falling backward, is actually allowing it to be this easy. Well, if it can be this easy here, I guess it can be. This is, well, this is here, it is, this easy. That's right. But it wasn't, didn't seem that easy last night. Because you were trying to do something. You were trying to get somewhere. You were trying to remember something. And all of that was based on the thought that you weren't already there that you don't already know this in your being, that you have never really forgotten this. And so then to try to remember it is a superimposition on what has never really been forgotten. Thought to have been forgotten and experience to have been forgotten. But really, we're speaking really here, in the core of cores, cannot be forgotten. And the ease the, which you just demonstrated but you were talking about some transcendent... I never no, talk no. about anything transcendent. So Transcendence is beautiful. Yeah. But transcendence appears and disappears. No. I'm talking about what is always here. I guess if I kept... If I went with that knowing, uh -huh. it would get... 
bigger, more pervasive. Well, you have to see for yourself. Then you don't have to guess. Mm -hmm. Then you know for certain. Then your reference point is not what you think about yourself or any mind state that appears, transcendent or otherwise. It's what is always here. It's about who you are. And this is belongs to everyone. Everyone. This is not earned. This already belongs to you. This it can never be separated from you and can never be given to you. It's already who you are. Everything in our culture conspires to the overlooking of this. That's part of the game of Leela. Let's don't even make a judgment on that conspiracy. It's actually quite a wonderful game. There's nothing wrong with the game or the conspiracy. Because in the moment of discovery, what a sweet return. What a sweet opening. Wasn't scary at all. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's didn't right. have to. Didn't have to. Didn't have to. Submit. Submit. That's right. You certainly didn't have to submit to me or doing tricks or proving yourself. All you had to do, all that is required, is in one instant surrender to yourself. You're right here where you are, so there's no distance that needs to be traveled. You already are, so there's nothing that has to be done to become yourself. Just surrender to yourself. And this surrender simply requires that you, for a moment, withdraw your attention from who it is you think you are, or should be, or were, or will be, or could have been. That's where attention usually is. Just withdraw that and let it naturally, happily, easily fall back into the embrace of one's own self. I fell forward. <laughs> okay, okay, fall forward into. Yeah. And you really didn't even fall. This, oh. We're just using that right. because it's a word that sometimes works. It's not a falling. It's not a moving at all. It's mm -hmm. nothing. It's a recognition. It's a recognition. And the truth is that recognition is already here. And that's what I was saying earlier. It's already here without you knowing how it's here or when it came in or what. It's already here. It has nothing to do with deservability or destiny or karma. All of that goes on in what is already here. I thank you so much. I've even forgotten what the conversation was about that got you up here, but <laughs> I raised my hand. That's all it takes. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, this is a perfect demonstration of the usual reference point is to what I'm thinking and even the thought but I'm always thinking. This thought gets believed as if it's reality. It's not reality. You're not always thinking. But you are always aware, because you are awareness. You may not always be aware of what's happening in the moment, which uh, is called mindfulness. But awareness is always aware. And mindfulness is a beautiful trait that some people have naturally and some people learn. But even to confuse mindfulness with the truth of oneself is a 
huge mistake. You are awareness itself. So if you are aware of some past misery or some fantasy of some future success or the sensations in your body, finally you are aware, period. I mean, you are aware. Aware is you. (laughs) Aware is you. And this very simple, basic truth gets overlooked in all realms of life, worldly, spiritual, doesn't matter. So the essential trusting of what is finally true, what is always true, gets overlooked. And then even when one is mindful, there's still a a doing to be mindful. And if there's a moment where there's uh, awareness travels to some other realm, past or future, there's a, oh my God, I wasn't aware. But you cannot help but be aware because aware is who you are. Awareness is who you are. Universal, absolute awareness is who you are. Localized in a particular nervous system is called incarnation. Beautiful, wondrous experience. But if you believe the thought, I am this body, this is who I am, without checking out what the field is that that thought arises in, then the experience of incarnation will be one of a ground of suffering. Some great pleasure, some great pain, but a ground of suffering because it's a lie. You can say, I am this body, but say, first, I am aware. Then you say, I am this world. I am this body, and this body, and this body. I am all. Because awareness is in and around everybody. Nothing escapes awareness. You follow this? You with me here? Of course you are. (laughs) No matter what you're thinking. So if the reference point becomes what you just demonstrated, this characteristic-lessly beingness, this is an altogether different experience than the experience of living life referenced by what you think is happening, or what you think should be happening, or what you think did happen. (laughs) That's the Holy Ghost Church, right? So I sometimes talk badly about religions. It's useful to talk badly about everything sometimes, you know. I sometimes talk badly about the body or thoughts, but present in everything. And what those bells were chiming about is this mystery that is uncatchable by thought or by mind activity and yet never separated from any thought or mind activity. So every religion, every spiritual movement, maybe even every political movement, maybe every drive comes from 
this exaltation of this mystery that is forever present and forever uncatchable. So to surrender to the paradox of forever present and forever uncatchable, well, I highly recommend it. It's as if the mind then just explodes. Forever uncatchable and forever present. This is a very intimate embrace. And intimate embraces can be scary. There's a falling forward or a falling backward or a falling into. And everyone in here has had at least the at least the first intimation of intimate embrace. And then the mind gets busy circling that, trying to keep it controllable. (laughs) But when it's controllable, it is not an intimate embrace. So the, the great good news from Papaji, from Ramana, from your own heart, your own self, is to return to this embrace. Fall into yourself, and you fall into love. But not controllable love, and not love that focused on objects, even cute ones. (laughs) But love that is free. 